the grief journey continued and really working through how do we process intense grief? How do we find our truth? And how do we find enjoyment and purpose in our life? I'm Christy Bundukumara, psychiatric nurse practitioner with over 20 years of clinical experience, but I have lost three children. And over the course of 17 years, and my heart is broken but I'm also committed to turning my pain into purpose. I went through 45 days of grief where every day I worked through grief. And I have, it has come to, to my attention that there are five selves that we need to be really making sure that we are working through as we process intense grief. Self-care. These are the five selves. Self-care, self-regulation, finding your spiritual self, self-improvement, and self-movement. And today I'm going to talk specifically about self-care, okay? And let's start with the basics. Food, water, sunlight, sleep, safety, connection. I know that there's many, many people out there who have lost a child, lost a spouse, have some sort of very intense grief, and you are not taking care of yourself. And I'm not talking about, you know, a certain diet or, or being super healthy, or I am talking about basics of, of just eating for fuel. Um, making sure that you're hydrated, going outside and finding sunlight, making sure that you are making sleep a priority, that you are safe, and that you are maintaining connections and at some point in your life, creating new connections. And I can tell you, almost every grieving parent that I talk to has some element there that is not being taken care of. Oftentimes in our culture, we talk about self-care, self-love, and it's almost indulgent. Oh, get your nails done, get a massage. What is a one hour massage gonna do if you haven't slept in four months? What is you know, a, a nail appointment going to do for your physical and mental health if you're not eating right, you're not drinking enough water. Connections, super important, but oftentimes the first thing that we push away from, nobody understands our pain. And that may be true, but that doesn't mean you don't need them, and it doesn't mean that they don't want to help. Someone does not need to understand you or understand your pain to be empathetic. And so when we're talking about self-care, we have to talk first about the basics. So that food, water, sunlight, sleep, safety, connection, out of those, which things are you ignoring or neglecting? Do some self-evaluation there. What do you need to start uh, taking care of? What, if, you know, do you actually have something that's counteracting that? Are you drinking too much? You know, are you, using um, you know, substances that are bringing you down. It, it, this is an important piece to self-care. We all talk about self-care as indulgent. One of the rules that I made for myself, um, I have a, a very strong addiction um, history in my, uh, my father's, my biological father's side of the family. I scored high on addiction scales back when I was trying to, to be a missionary. And 
So I think I have kind of that addictive personality and I can see how easy it would be. You've lost your child and you start with one glass of wine and you know, to, to wind down and try to get to sleep. And then it's two glasses of wine. And now a year later, it's a bottle. I'm not saying what you should and shouldn't do. I'm saying, remember, these are the five selves. This is you finding your truth, okay? It's not that alcohol is bad or that, you know, it's not any one thing. It's what is your truth? Are you doing something to make it worse? Are you doing something to hurt yourself? In an extreme, we're talking about suicidal ideations or even cutting or attempting suicide, right? Obviously, that's the opposite of self-care. And if in any of these things feel impossible to do, then seek professional help. For me, I've been working on myself from a mental health, psychological standpoint for many years. And, and the death of my children was still unbearable and difficult. And so wherever you are, in your journey, it's your journey. But I can tell you for myself, I'm a go-getter type A personality. I, uh, you know, I do well, I think I'm healthy. Um, and I actually, uh, as part of the 45 days of grief, I wanted some like actual objective data to say what you know, what happens before and after actually processing grief. Like, can I show that you can get better? And I have had been experiencing some cognitive problems since my son's death in 2016. I believe I've always had ADD, but I haven't really treated it most of my life. And my test scores were showing definitely difficulty and in inattention. And so after my son's death, uh, sporadically, I would treat my ADD cognitive symptoms with medication for that. After my daughter's death, it, it, the cognitive symptoms became worse. I also had uh, a vaccine reaction a around the same time um, as that, but cognitively, I was just really having trouble pulling it together. And, you know, my memory was impaired and my attention to detail was very impaired. And so I went to uh, the Amen Clinics, which is a, they don't take insurance, and so um, you have to pay for an evaluation. But I did a brain scan, a spec scan, to look at my brain. And I knew there was gonna be, you know, maybe like a mild trauma response, and maybe there would be something specific to grief. And when I had my follow-up appointment, she said to me, there is something medically wrong with you medically wrong with me. I'm like, I don't know. I don't have it. And there's nothing medically wrong with me. She said, yes, there is. I, you know, we don't know what it is. We can run some more tests, but there's definitely something medically wrong with you. So kind of a shock, right? And at that point I have a decision to make. I don't really have any major symptoms. Um, and do I just say, oh, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's just a little bit of inflammation or do I self-care? Do I try to figure it out? And so as I was trying to figure it out, it came to me that I now know was 12 years ago, I was told that I had nodules on my thyroid and that it, you know, it needed to be biopsied and that, it, you know, cause it could potentially be cancer. And I, I never went back. I was like, it's not cancer. I, it's not cancer. So I've gone through this whole process, and if you want to watch the grief documentary, we're going to try to have it out in a couple months. Um, I had a, a partial thyroidectomy. I do not have cancer. OK, great. I don't have cancer, but I took care of that. I have a friend who lost her husband 12 years ago, and she's high risk for colon cancer, and she's supposed to be doing a colonoscopy yearly from the time that she was 40. So she is now officially 12 years behind and had never gotten that colonoscopy. 
right? That's what I'm talking about with self-care. Are you following through? Are you following up on those things? Um, after the no cancer, yay, great day, um, a couple days later, I got some of those lab reports back and there's still something pretty significantly medically going on with me. So I have to make a choice. Just like you have to make a choice of how are you gonna take care of yourself. And self-care is that basic stuff first. Then we can get into the indulgence, right? But first, we have to make sure that we are eating, drinking enough water, sleeping. Sleep is so hard after trauma and after intense grief. I know that my daughter died in the middle of the night when I was sound asleep. So I often wake up in a panic. And I am currently taking uh, something specific for kind of PTSD sleep. Maybe one day I'll be able to get off of that, right? But it's okay to find that balance. What is your self-care? I do wanna say that you don't wanna get on addictive substances for sleep. I'm personally on clonidine. Talk to your doctor about um, non-controlled substances for sleep, okay? Because this is a very vulnerable time in your life and oftentimes your doctor feels sorry for you. They're like, wow, if, if I was going through this, I'd want some Xanax. But Xanax is not, Xanax and, and that whole class of benzodiazepines is not what's good for your health and your sleep long term. But finding that balance, you may need to take medication to take care of yourself. If you can't do these basic things, you may need an antidepressant. Depression's real and it's chemical and we have treatment for that. So, self-care. The five selves, but the first is self-care. We've got to take care of ourselves. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. You just want to get by because the pain is too much. But commit to self-care and continue to uh, watch through this journey as I share other nuggets of things that we can do, practical action steps. Follow, subscribe, keep watching, and learn how to process intense grief. I truly believe that you are mentally strong.